I'm going to tell you the story of success, a story of a brand that took over the world through its innovative products. But I'm also going to share, once they reached the top, how they stopped exploring, which led to a fall from grace. It's approaching the end of the century, the future feels like it's becoming the present, and optimism is high. But we aren't quite ready to think different. That will come in less than a decade. A Canadian company called Research in Motion, who are going to become so big that at one point the US Department of Justice is going to ask that the company be allowed to continue to operate despite a series of proven patent infringements. Why? Well, Research in Motion, or RIM as they were more commonly known, were the creators of the BlackBerry, the first of its kind fully encrypted phone and emailing device, and one which a large number of US departments had become dependent on within their ecosystem of communications. So how does a company go from having 85 million subscribers in 2011 to only 23 million by 2016? We are going to explore how a brilliant mind saw and made the future, but once he had arrived there, he failed to recognize their view of that future was no longer accurate. Mike Lazaridis is a Canadian entrepreneur, and in 1996, RIM had developed a two-way pager. This first-of-its-kind product had become a must-have for top executives. The pager allowed them to not only check messages, but most crucially, they could also now check their emails. As the success of the pager grew, its dimensions also altered, getting a little taller, but slimmer. Yet it still maintained the fully buttoned QWERTY keyboard, but now with a larger screen. The BlackBerry could now receive messages, take calls, check emails, and search the internet. Competition at the time was fierce within the mobile phone market, with BlackBerry competing against Palm, Ericsson, and IBM. But BlackBerry had a secret weapon in their arsenal, which gave them the edge. And that weapon? Well, that was Mike himself, and his deep understanding of the limitations of the then mobile phone network. At the time, the networks were pretty fragile, and were really only designed to allow minimal amounts of data across them which limited how email and the internet could be accessed. But RIM had invented a way around this, which allowed people to access their email in an easy to use way. They also did something else which provided their loyal customers added benefits. BlackBerry had created an encrypted text messaging system, which allowed all BlackBerry customers to send text messages for free. If we look back at how phone plans were sold in the early 2000s, they sold minutes and texts. BlackBerry became more popular, growing users from business users to good old regular customers. Then in 2007, everything changed. 29th of June, 2007, BlackBerry's fortunes had been sealed. As the now famous presentation identified, a widescreen iPod, a mobile phone, an internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, an internet communicator. Are you getting it? Yes, that's right. In 2007, the iPhone was launched and the world changed. Mike Lazaridis knew that the iPhone network requirements made what they were claiming almost impossible. He, along with others in the industry, believed it wouldn't catch on. He even said it was an impossible machine. And for the first two years, he was right. The added bandwidth caused multiple technical issues. But in time, these were ironed out and the beauty of a glass interface that could morph into numbered buttons or a full QWERTY keyboard were impossible to ignore. Oh yes, there was also something else, or as Mr. Jobs would say, there was one more thing, and that was its partnerships with the networks. Network operators were charging for minutes and text messages, but with the agreement between them and Apple, they were now charging for data. So the more data users consumed, the more networks made. So carriers wanted to partner with Apple rather than BlackBerry due to the possibility of increased profits. So what can we learn from the BlackBerry story? Well, for us, never stop questioning your assumptions. Things are changing faster than ever. If we take scientific research, it has doubled over the last few years. And don't underestimate partnerships. I hope you've enjoyed the fable. Do give us a like and do consider subscribing. We post videos nearly every week about founder stories, design, design thinking, brand and digital. Also, we had a few bits of feedback regarding some blurring in previous videos. I think that was a combination between shutter speed and uh, frame rate, which we hopefully have now fixed. Do let us know in the comments if that's the case. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.